Well, friends, we are almost to the end. Almost to the end of Calc BC. Want to take a look today at particle motion, some of the applications of parametric equations to particle motion. Uh, this is what we effectively call vector calculus because we're going to talk about particles moving along vectors and how that matters. So, if I may, on uh, 0 less than or equal to t less than or equal to pi, let x equals e to the t times sine t and y equals e to the t times cosine t. I want to do some things. I want to find the speed of the particle at time equals 3, and I want to find the distance traveled on 0 to O heck pi. Want to talk about how to go at such a thing. So, if I am interested in the speed of a particle, speed is the square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared. And I am interested in that at time equals 3. That is what I am interested in. So, in this particular case, square root of dx dt squared e to the t sine t plus e to the t cosine t squared plus dy dt dy dt is e to the t cosine t minus e to the t sine t. Now I imagine that this probably simplifies a little bit. So let's see what we can do with that. Let's see if we can do a little bit of simplification, help our life out just a bit. So this is square root of e to the t sine t squared plus, let's see, 2e to the 2t sine t cosine t plus e to the t cosine t squared plus, and then this other stuff over here, that's e to the t cosine t squared, so there's two of those, e to the t sine t squared, there's two of those, and then you've got a negative 2 e to the 2t sine t cosine t, goodbye, goodbye, and so you get the square root of 2 e to the 2t sine squared t plus 2e to the 2t cosine squared t, and we're going to evaluate that when time equals 3. How are we going to evaluate that when time equals 3? We're going to come over here, and we're going to say I want the square root of 2 times e to the 6th times sine of 3 squared plus 2 times e to the 6th times cosine 3 squared. And that's a number. That is a number. Glorious. Glor uh, 20, uh, three decimal places, goodness sakes. Okay. If I'm looking for distance traveled, distance traveled is the integral of speed over the time interval. 
that's what distance traveled is. It is arc length. And as we learned in our last lesson, arc length is the integral of radical dx dt squared plus dy dt squared. So, integral 0 to pi of that simplified thing that we had... Now, just between us, this probably simplifies a bit more. Because I can factor out a 2e to the 2t, and what's left is sine squared t plus cosine squared t, and that's 1. So I can just integrate this thing. And so now I'm going to run a finint. And I take my I take my two e to the two x with respect to x from zero to pi, and the calculator does that for me, and I say thirty one point three one two. So you have got to know how to come up with speed and how to come up with arc length, distance traveled. Excellent. One other thing we should play around with. Um, let x be, I don't know, I'll make up something. 3 cosine of pi t over 4 and y equal, I don't know, 5t squared for 0 less than or equal to t less than or equal to 2 pi. Why not? Why not? I want to find the acceleration vector for the particle at time equals 1, <clears throat> and then I want an expression for dy dx in terms of t. Two things that I want, that I really, really want. So, we can do this, the acceleration vector, because we can't talk about the velocity, because we've got an x component and a y component, but we can talk about the velocity vector. Now, the velocity vector is a vector where... The first component is the derivative of x with respect to t, so that would be negative 3 sine of pi over 4t times the derivative of that angle. And the second component is the derivative of y with respect to t. Oh, that's good. That's your velocity vector. The acceleration vector is, no surprise, the derivative of the components of the velocity vector. So the first component will be the derivative of the first component of the velocity vector. So that's negative. There's going to be a cosine of pi over 4t. And then I've got to multiply by pi over 4. So that's going to be 3 pi squared over 16. And the second component is going to be 10. So now I want to know what this is at time equals 1. So the second component is going to be 10. And the first component is going to be whatever negative 3 times pi. Really? Really? I have a master's degree. Negative 3 pi squared divided by 16 times the cosine of pi over 4 is, and that's, that's negative 1.309. Could have gone 308 if you're taking AP, three decimal places truncated or rounded. 
if I want dy dx in terms of t, dy dx in terms of t is dy dt over dx dt. Conveniently, we had to come up with dy dt and dx dt to get the acceleration vector. So we just take this answer and put it over that one, 10t over negative 3 pi over 4 sine of pi over 4t. So particle motion is a nice extension of, uh, really an application of, parametric equations. Things that you need to know how to do. You need to know how to find speed. Just square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared. You need to know how to find distance traveled. You need to know how to find acceleration vectors. And you need to know how to find dy dx in terms of t. But what if? What if you know dx dt and you know dy dt, oh, let's make this nice. Let's make this e to the t plus cosine t. Let's do that. Uh, and then let's say that this is true for all times greater than or equal to zero. Uh, at time equals zero, the particle is at two zero. Let's just say that. Let's just say that. I want to know some things. I want to know the speed of the particle at time equals two. I want to know where is the particle at time equals 2? And I want to know, oh boy, oh, you'll love this. Where is the particle at time equals 2? Oh, what else do I need to know? I want to know an acceleration vector. What is its acceleration vector at time equals 2. And this would be a very nice thing for you to think about before we got back together, because now I put a little bit of a twist on the thing. You've got to come up with speed. Speed involves dx dt and dy dt, so it appears that I know what I have to do. Um, where is the particle? Now that's backing up the truck from dx dt dy dt to x and y, how are we able to do that? And then acceleration vector involves derivatives of dx dt and dy dt. So that is the thing that I hope we get to talk about when we come back together. Excellent. I will see you then.